many, rocks might seem like the most boring things on and beyond Earth. How can you get more dull, more mundane than a rock? Turns out some of these minerals you see every day hold within them the secrets to the world's geography, climate, and biodiversity of ages long gone. Even some others bestow upon us hints about the solar system and beyond. From rocks, we can learn about past climates, cataclysmic events, and the movement of continents. They can also tell us how life developed over time. By studying Antarctica's rocks and mountains, we can find out how Earth has changed in the past, is changing now, and will change in the future. Antarctica's record of climate change found in its rocks and seabed is one of the most important in the world. What makes Antarctica special? The southern corner of the world has a very diverse surface with under ice lakes, mountain ranges, valleys, and more. A particularly useful part of the Antarctic geography is a small area of rock emerging above ice sheets and glaciers called a nunatak. Antarctica is also home to dry valleys which contain lots of exposed rock. Because of weather patterns, even glaciers don't disturb them. They're called the oases of Antarctica, but they're the coldest and driest places on Earth. From these areas, we can collect fossils and samples to help understand the world's history. Antarctic rock has told us about an ancient continental shield which caused a lot of volcanic activity. In fact, there are still volcanoes today in the area. Eruptions in Antarctica have been common for 25 million years and coincided with the formation of the Antarctic ice sheet. Lots of these volcanoes show the effects of their interactions with ice. It's important to understand them so that we can predict the future of the ice sheet and its role on Earth. Some rocks help us to find out how Antarctica has moved over the ages. We can actually use computer models to show how the Antarctic looked millions of years ago. Over the course of history, it has drifted from the equator to the pole, from forest to tundra to frozen wasteland. Speaking of Antarctica's history, with primeval forests come remains. Fossils are our window into the history of Earth and evolution. Fossilization is made up of a series of post-mortem processes on an organism. Once it is covered in sediment, the organism begins to decay and its old body parts are replaced by new minerals in a process called permineralization. Fossils buried in glacial ice, anoxic peat bogs, and amber can also preserve soft tissue because there is no bacteria present. Fossils are carefully studied in order to organize the timeline of life on Earth and the ecosystems present at any given point. Dinosaur fossils have actually been uncovered in unlikely places such as Antarctica, which goes to support the theory of plate tectonics. The breakup of the supercontinent Pangaea would have caused the same animals and plants to exist on different continents. Long before Antarctica moved to the South Pole, it shared life forms with other land masses in the Triassic period. Not only is Antarctica filled with fossils waiting to be discovered, but also with meteorites. While they do fall all around the world with equal probability, it's easier to find them in some places than others. Because of certain environmental conditions, they can be preserved for millions of years. One such location is the cold desert of Antarctica. Temperatures are so low and precipitation is so rare that they aren't easily eroded away. Additionally, the high-speed, gravity-driven catabatic winds uncover previously buried meteorites. These meteorites are used by scientists to better understand how the solar system and its planets were formed. Studying these extraterrestrial rocks is one of the fastest, cheapest, and easiest ways to advance our knowledge of the solar system and the history of the Earth. Some meteorites come from other worlds unlikely to be visited by spacecraft in the near future. As you already know, fossils and meteorites aren't the only rocks to make use of. In 1970, the UK and New Zealand brought up the issue of commercial mining in Antarctica. Since then, it has been banned across the continent. New Zealand took initiative to protect Antarctica from the scramble to exploit natural resources. Come the 1980s and 1990s, this possibility was a very controversial issue. Unregulated exploration and mining would have caused problems both environmental and political. In 1998, one convention asserted that mining would only be permitted if all treaty nations agreed there would be no threat to the habitat. There were major international campaigns against mining at all by Greenpeace and WWF. They put Australia and France under pressure, so they did not agree to it. Since every nation had to agree, mining was banned. They were later joined by New Zealand, Italy, and Belgium. The US, Japan, and the UK proceeded to argue against this ban being permanent. Some people believe that Antarctica is set to be the next El Dorado. Since it is believed that Antarctica, New Zealand, and Australia were all once connected, it is reasonable to assume that the former has the same useful minerals as the latter two. In the Arctic, there are material disputes over what country owns what. However, in the Antarctic, no such disputes exist because the continent is technically owned by no one. For now. Antarctica's mining ban will come under review in 2048. In order to overturn it, the majority of treaty nations must agree. For some, this is a very scary date looming in the future. Right now, Antarctica is a nature reserve the world's largest natural laboratory, and the common heritage of humankind. So when 2048 rolls around, keep this in mind. There is so much on this continent to protect and preserve for scientific advancement and as a nod of respect to Earth's final frontier. 
Let's try not to let materialistic urges throw that away. 